we've got Scott, who is a he and a him. He's coming out of California. And what I'm seeing here, Scott, is that you have a justification of slavery and genocide that is uh, depicted in the Bible. Um, and then you also say if morality is subjective, then it's justifiable. Welcome to the atheist experience. Johnny and Phoebe want to say hi. Tell us what you mean about that. Hi, yeah, I'm in Poland, not California. <laughs> um, so uh, I don't Slight know. Slight difference. Uh, sorry about that. <laughs> I think. Who said Cal? Did I say California? You did. You said California. I wonder why. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> sorry about that. Sorry about that. Scott, uh, tell okay. me what you mean. I, I think. Yeah, well. The, the Bible to me is a mishmash of fact and fiction. Okay? okay. So if we took part of it as fact and said, yeah, there was slavery and genocide, mm -hmm. if our morality is subjective and for instance, as I, as I said to the person before, if for England to survive, Europe had to go, then Europe has to go. I, and I think that also proves that God, the possibility of God, is incredibly slim because it's an evolutionary process where we are animals and part of our instinct is to protect our own. And we're also tribal, so as opposed to us always wanting to get together to you know, protect the whole of the species, there's subsects within our species that we don't get on with, and if you had to wipe them out to survive, whilst it might not be ethical or morally acceptable to the majority, if you're in a situation of kill or be killed, then I think it's justifiable. The same with slavery. If you needed to take slaves to ensure the survival of your clan, for instance, uh, or your clan would die out, then I would say that that is justifiable as well. But that doesn't mean that it is moral or, um, you know, it can be seen as a, as a moral action. Um, it's just it neat to be whilst the devil drives on the pun. You're saying, it, you're saying it would be expedient under the circumstances, but not moral? Is that what you're suggesting? I'm, I'm suggesting that if for you know, your people to survive if you had a choice to make that might not be... Um, Are you saying the ends justify the means? People, some people would still do it. Some Scott, are you saying yeah, the ends course. justify the means if, if here? But some I, people, I want to I, I want to roll. I'm going to start to break in here, but I need to roll back. In, so you said that you believe the Bible is a mishmash of fact and fiction. How have you come to the conclusion of what is yeah. fact in the Bible and what is fiction in the Bible? And how do you know it's fact? And how do you know it's fiction? This is, this is one of the issues. Um, we're not all philosophers. You know it's fact. If they're talking about a place called Galilee, we know Galilee's there. So it's a factual place. So if they're talking about Galilee... I'm assuming it's a fact that... So Galilee you're saying there's objective okay. facts in there. Is, what, is that what you're saying? You're saying there's objective facts in the Bible? Yes. I'm also stating that there has been genocides that have happened throughout history. So it's probably a fact that genocides happen. Slavery has also happened throughout history. Yeah. So it's probably a fact that slavery has happened. Okay. I, I, I'm an atheist, by the way. So I'm yeah, not, no, I saw that. Yeah, yeah. Let, let's Something let's like let the speak. audience know that we haven't said that that Scott is an atheist. I don't think that. I know we've had this call a bunch of times. We have so many times talked about that that uh, there may be some justification. Or callers have, have made the argument that there's some justification for slavery. Usually, it's coming from a theist caller who wants to uh, defend the faith in some way. But just because something happens, Scott, I just don't see how that's justification for it. Um, the fact that human beings might do it to preserve their clan out of, out of some desperate need to maintain their culture, I don't think that it's justifiable. I think it's just something that people would do. I think it's abhorrent and it's tribalistic and it externalizes the humanity of others 
for the purpose of preserving your individual way of life. I just don't think that there's any justification whatsoever, whether it's in the Bible or not, for treating a human being as a means and not an end in themselves. And just because some Bronze Age semi-savages may have justified it uh, and it worked for them and, and the culture influenced Christianity and Christianity is dominant right now, I just don't think that counts. So is that really what you're saying or am I, have I got you wrong? No, you've got me 100% right. I think the problem may be is that we have to look at it dispassionately. You know, it's I'm, I disagree with the basic ideology and I would be against slavery. Well, I am against slavery and I'm against genocide. Yeah. What I'm yeah. trying to state is that it actually reinforces the fact that God is a fictional character because it's... It proves that we are animals and that we are part of the environment that we live in because I've we would do things and go on. I've got a hypothetical question here for you. If for the survival of your tribe, you and your family had to be taken as slaves, would you accept it? It's a situation that is easy to answer with regards to it not really happening, I would assume that if it was the case of if everyone was going to be wiped out, if we didn't get taken as slaves, um, then I don't think we would have much choice, would we? Because if we decided not to do it, we'd get wiped out anyway. So there would be no survival. But so again, by doing that and being entered into slavery, which isn't something that I would want, obviously, but if it's something that had to be done, then I believe that would be altruistic on our behalf for the survival of the rest of our specific clan, which again, to me, reinforces the fact that God is a fictional uh, creation because it's, I believe it's a natural evolution, which is why the majority of us all work together to you know, make sure that we don't have to go into slavery, that genocides don't happen because we evolve. But there are, unfortunately, certain individuals that don't run on the same train tracks as we do. And to them, it wouldn't be, um, yeah. you know, a necessary evil, so to speak, which, again, so, doesn't make it right, but it reinforces the fact there is no... Yeah. Scott, know, I think what you're, what you're suggesting is that if it's a choice, if your individual community we're going to be subjected by conquerors to an overwhelming force, an outside overwhelming force, that it's a choice between complete extermination and voluntary slavery, which is, which is kind of nonsense. <laughs> and so if you were to choose for you and your family, like we will go into permanent bondage so that we may live to fight another day. You're suggesting that that is, um, the moral choice versus allowing yourself to just stand on your stand on your feet and be cut down by this these these uh these hordes is that what you're saying i think it's an aspect of our nature some people wouldn't do it some people would do it which is the sure. point that i'm trying to make some people would yeah. just say i'm never going to accept that and they would be wiped out and some people would say okay and then they would try to escape or try to do whatever they could to get out of the bondage you know and, and survive and make sure that they're okay. they're people yeah yeah but Scott, I've, I've, Scott, got, I've got one more yeah, question i still think yeah, it's so abhorrent. I've got one more. Scott, i got it hold Thank on you. phoebe's got a question I i've think, got one more is, question yeah how are you joining the dots mm -hmm. yeah. join the dots for me because I'm, I'm slightly not fine how are you joining the dots from your moral standpoint and hypotheses and positions that you're putting forward here today and it therefore being that god does not exist join the dots for me join the dots for you well i i believe that anything that is complex on top of an easy explanation doesn't need to be there you don't need extra layers of stuff so for instance there are other if you observe nature there are other animals that will, you know... But medical fight. science is very complicated. Are you saying we don't need the complex that. layers of that as well? What's complicated, sorry? What did you say? I medical think. science is very, very complicated. Um, my line of work is very, very complicated. 
Yeah. Are we saying we don't need the extra layers on top of that? <laughs> No, you no, because what you're doing is you're taking something that is real and you are trying to understand something that can be physically examined and you can, you know, understand behavioural traits, et cetera, et cetera. So you've got stuff that you can look at and you can understand. And the other thing is, is 95% of the population of this planet don't have, you know, they, they're not biologists, they're not chemists, they're not, you know, physicists. We're just normal people, okay? And whilst it's all fair and well coming across and having a philosophical conversation, not everyone gets it at the top end. A lot of us want it a lot simpler. And the simplest way, to, or for me, right. my understanding of it is the fact that everything that we are doing now when we are drilling inward we are testing things that are observable in the universe. So if, and, but, and, you know, behavioural um, studies, you know, if you go back to Pavlov's dogs or, you know, whatever you want to do. All right. Scott, Scott, hang, on, hang, on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Please let Johnny standpoint. say something. Scott, I appreciate your call. I guess, um, so no offence, but this is not earth shattering, an uh, earth shattering conversation here. We don't think that God is real either, or at least we're not convinced that God is is a is a thing. We're as as I say, if you have evidence of God, convince me. Yeah, but 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 Scott's an atheist, so you're calling to say that. I just don't get it, Scott. I appreciate you calling. We're gonna move on, and we're gonna go on to another caller. Um, you take care and uh, and uh, have a great weekend. All right. Well, you know what. I'm still um, missing the dots, Johnny, on that. Yeah, I'm still no, missing the dots. I, the reason why I cut that call short is because I had a kind of like a so what moment going on here. And then we kind <laughs> I of I was started, kind of feeling the same. We started inspiring. meandering. Yeah, it looked yeah. a lot spicier and interesting in the description. So for those of you following along at home, we have we have a basic description of what the call is going to be about. And it just became a kind of preach into the choir kind of a situation. Yeah. And then philosophical meanderings no offense scott but i yeah. if i didn't know that's what your call was about i wouldn't have taken you 